La question des représentations How to represent sustainable development displays an essential role if we try to understand the chronology and how the concept has evolved over time. You remember the Brundtland report, which played an essential role in 1987 with the well-known definition, present generations must take into account the needs of future generations. And therefore, they, we must make sure that future generations will be able to meet their needs, and there are a number of limitations imposed. But we're trying to understand how to disseminate the idea of sustainable development. In 1987, thinking in terms of social, economy, environment, this was new. People knew about the environment, people knew about natural disasters and the consequence of growth on the environment. But thinking of this in terms of model or concept with a different vision, that seemed to be difficult. At the time, a company, a consultancy firm, was asked to think about how to advertise a sustainable development. John Gilden uh, played an essential role because he was uh, asked to think about uh, this uh, concept and how to uh, make it known. The Brundtland report was based on three spheres telling us in which direction we're going with social, ecologic, and economic uh, values. And sustainable development is in the middle. Obviously, this is the ideal objective we're trying to uh, reach, but there are transition phases and economic and social aspects could be a transition model. For instance, fair trade is a very good example. We try to uh, act in a responsible way, and when we buy a product, we look where it comes from and whether the producer has been uh, retributed for his work. So this is fair trade with an economic dimension. In the transitions, there can also be a connection uh, with the uh, living uh, world. What load can a planet uh, withhold if the load are our needs that we're trying to fulfill? The three spheres, therefore, play a vital role, and they will make idealize the notion of sustainable development and make it more popular. But some questions uh, are raised very quickly. How do they interfere with each other? Where's the economic element? Where's the social? And where's the uh, environmental element? Obviously, the uh, economical aspect must uh, gravitate, but depends on the social laws. We have to uh, avoid inequalities and poverty. And at the same time, the social aspect is embedded in the environment. We cannot go beyond the limits uh, given by nature and the earth. So economy has borders that should not be exceeded. And these are the borders that we're discussing right now on their impacts of economic actions. And uh, can't we give uh, back economy its true value? These three dimensions were quite limiting because who is going to implement sustainable development? Well, the players, companies, citizens, you, me, with single small actions, we are participating in sustainable development. And also we start talking about stakeholders. We, who are the players, who are the people, who are the companies participating in sustainable development? Nowadays, we talk about governance. How do we govern principles jointly? How do we implement them? And we understood fairly quickly that some people placed governments at the heart of the model, how to act together collectively if you had to take the right decisions. We might uh, imagine also that there is a fourth dimension and that governance is the fourth dimension. But talking about four dimension is difficult because no temporal scale is represented, no local global dimension is defined, and yet we can justifiably ask ourselves what political stakes, economical, economic stakes are at play, should politicians integrate ethics and uh, ethical criteria in the analysis of uh, sustainable development? So in each sphere, questions are asked. How do we make decisions? How do we integrate complex phenomena? And how do we integrate scales, local scale, global scale? Do we meet a local problem uh, with local solutions? But if the consequences are global, what do we do? This is known as the butterfly effect. How do we also integrate future needs today, whereas we're dealing with 
current problem. So this is the temporal scale. All the questions are being asked in our representations, and uh, this raises the question of what about the basis for sustainable development? And one element of reply was culture. Why not use culture as the basis for sustainable development? And there's, we have a point. We have a point here. We uh, have homogenized our economic models, social models, models, environmental models. The only dimension that still admits some diversity and the wealth of diversity is culture. And the fact that it might provide an answers to uh, sustainable environmental issues is uh, very important because behind the cultural diversity, there are also transverse horizontal elements, participation, responsibility, democracy. In a nutshell, isn't, wouldn't there be a way to integrate all the elements that I have described in a single pattern, which may be difficult, complex, but at the same time easy to understand? Who goes in? Who is interested by sustainable development? All those who have stakes at play, climate, biodiversity, poverty, construction, uh, energetic efficacy. We all ask ourselves questions on the stakes at play for today, for tomorrow, which play an essential role in our life as a society. And this is why we're going to look at the various spheres, the uh, cost-benefit ratio, how to allocate rare resources, and also in the social sphere, how do we reduce inequalities, or ecology environment, how do we integrate the complexity of an ecosystem, and finally, integrating diversity, cultural diversity and governance. Ideally, of course, durability should be there, but we have to understand the spheres under the local perspective. A climate change due to a greenhouse effect gas is a global phenomenon, but it also can be local because some people might suffer from uh, climatic changes. There are climate refugees nowadays, and the dimension of representations also takes into account uh, important parameters, the main values and principles, such as the principle of responsibility. We have duties rights, but we also have duties, and how do we comply with the du those duties? And the matter of solidarity, competition, can't we also make room for solidarity in the competition? And finally, how do we participate jointly? At a time when the welfare state is no longer playing a role, civil society might be able to take over some action, and sustainable development could be one of those actions. How do we participate? How do we contribute? How do we develop a dem democracies? This is one of the perspectives that is developed in sustainable development.